You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should be thinking about hard, suffering, pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Why do you want it to be quick and easy? Your mind is broken. Andrew Tate might be the most hated person on the internet right now. But regardless of what you think of him, he clearly understands how to get attention online. Meanwhile, your social media presence is basically a graveyard for your art. Truth lotion. Well, if you want to fight the enemy, you got to understand the enemy. So in this episode, I'm going to show you 10 audience grabbing principles that Andrew Tate uses that you should be using also if you want to blow up your art. Today we are reading from the Book of Influence. They're not ready for this. Number one. Andrew Tate understands that the online world is a spectacle. And that everyone is participating in this spectacle whether they want to or not. Either by your apathy or by your actions. Either by consuming or by producing. Either you're the cause or you're the one getting affected. All I know is if you're not creating the narrative, then you're a follower focusing on whatever the algorithms are telling you to focus on. Australian forest fires, COVID, Taylor Swift, Russia, abortion, school shootings, AI art. It always starts the same way. You're deeply concerned for a few days. You share your outrage memes using the accepted hashtags. Then you go back to doing what you were doing before. Absolutely nothing. Number two. Andrew Tate understands that you have to be loud. Being the loudest voice in the room isn't only about volume, you know. You can be loud even when you speak in a whisper. Like, you can be loud with your excellence. When you're the best at what you do, you don't have to say anything at all. People will make noise for you. You can be loud with your actions. It's even a cliche, right? Actions speak louder than words. You can be loud by being just as hardcore, just as entertaining, just as charismatic, and just as controversial in the way you say positive things. Troll the troll like Greta did with her small dick energy tweet. And like Lil Nas does daily. Number three. Andrew Tate understands that you have to be everywhere. Whenever you feel sad, or you have fewer likes on your posts, or no one cares about your new song on day three of release, what do you always end up doing? You disappear. Seriously. You need to stop ghosting your community. Because every time you do, you lose momentum. While the toxic influencers keep gaining. Shit, even when they put Andrew Tate in jail, what was he doing? Communicating with all his fans. Sending them emails. Emails every single day, even on weekends. When was the last time you sent an email to your people? Oh, but I know what you're thinking. He's in jail. He has time. Um, remember lockdown? Remember when you were stuck in your house for weeks, then months? With all that time on your hands, how many emails did you write to your community back then? How much art did you make? Jack shit. You were even less productive when you had an open schedule than when you were busy. Instead, you joined TikTok. Not to produce, though, <laughs> but to consume. Keeping in touch with your community by any means necessary is what you should be doing right now. Not hiding, communicating. This is bigger than you. Number four. Andrew Tate understands that you have to do things in the real world to light the internet on fire. Do you realize that Andrew Tate didn't even have social media when he exploded on social media? Every time you heard about him getting banned or canceled or deplatformed, it was really just some kid who had started an account with another variation of his name getting shut down. So then how did he end up so viral with no social media presence by turning heads in the real world. When you do things in the real world, all sorts of people start talking about you 
and then they use their own social media to propagate your message. Real-world actions are better than viral. Number five. Andrew Tate understands that you have to stand for something. Most creatives, when I ask them what they stand for as an artist, they have no clue. They mumble some incoherent thoughts, like mostly cliches, but there's no conviction or clarity in their words. Why? Because they've never even thought about it. And what happens when you have no vision? People think your art is nice, and then they forget about it as soon as they walk away. Meanwhile, what does your nemesis do? He publishes his worldview on his website for everyone to see. He calls it the 41 rules. He thought about it, he shared it publicly, and then he goes out into the world to defend it. How are you putting yourself out there? What are you defending? Number six. Andrew Tate understands that your tribe is all that matters. Andrew Tate isn't afraid of being disliked. The only opinion he cares about is the opinion of his tribe. If you are a part of his community, then you're the enemy. Meanwhile, when I ask you who your people are, you say everyone. Everyone? Really? You're that afraid of putting your guts on the line for a small group of ride or dies who share your worldview? Oh, right. You have no worldview. Number seven. Andrew Tate understands the concept of world building. Andrew Tate has created a world. A world with its own lingo. A world with its own heroes and its own enemies. But you, you won't even name your enemies because you're afraid of confrontation. You won't even utter their names or have a public point of view about them. That way, you can keep having congenial dinner conversations with reprehensible people. That way, you can avoid drama, no one gets mad, and you never make waves. But you know what they say about people pleasers. People pleasers make bad art. Number eight. Andrew Tate understands that he is your shadow self personified. You're not going to like this, but people like Andrew Tate, he's all the things that you wish that you could be, but that you repress. Don't get triggered. I don't mean the misogyny or the hate speech or the showing off and all of that. No, I mean the ability to say whatever he wants online. You wish you could do that too. You wish you could be as bold in your art and that you didn't have to worry about your boyfriend or your family or your school or your job being offended by a truthful painting that you made or a gut-wrenching piece of writing that you shared. You wish you could be yourself instead of hiding. Number nine. Andrew Tate understands the concept of narrative arc. I bet you've never thought about your own narrative arc. Have you? Because all you focus on is right now. Am I happy right now? What pleasures can I seek right now? What pain should I avoid right now? Blame. But you haven't developed the spiritual capacity to look at your peaks and valleys as poetry. poetry. That's what it is. You live your life always making decisions based on the moment. And that's why you make the same choices every day, even when they don't serve you. Stop that. And you keep making the same art every day, even though you've grown past that. When what you should be doing is crafting a life based on who you would like to become. Feel me? And letting your art follow. follow. Something interesting is happening right now. Even the king of toxicity himself is trying to rebrand. That's right. Andrew Tate is trying to pivot into your territory and slowly walking back all those hateful comments that made him famous. Why do you think he's doing that? Number 10. Because even Andrew Tate understands that the only thing more powerful than toxic content is uplifting art that has a message. You can't fight toxic content with the wallpaper you've been making. You see, most of the people saying positive things on the internet are creating wallpaper. They try to say things in a way that doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. And so they end up saying nothing. Words are coming out, 
but it's glossed over. No, the only counterforce to toxicity will never be that lame, touchy-feely, soft shit. To uplift the people, to break the internet, you need to make art that contains hardcore, scary to share sometimes, vulnerable as hell, layers of truth. Art that screams, you are not alone, and that speaks to a specific community that's for far too long been ignored. Art that embraces the messy, non-perfect side of humanity and allows people to feel whole again. Uplifting art that is groundbreaking, but hopeful, radical, but safe. Art that is created by an artist who doesn't fucking disappear. Because they don't have to. The energy of what they're doing is all they need to keep them moving forward. When will that artist be you? If you enjoyed this episode and you feel like you're ready to start making uplifting art, then join the Mystery School today at makeartnotcontent.com.